Hello, my name is Fiona. I'm the property curator here at Belton. Today we're going to take you for a tour behind the scenes. When you arrive at Belton, you would have seen the house rising out of the landscape in its beautiful Ancaster stone. The house was built in 1688 by the Brownlow family who owned it up until the time that it was given to the trust in 1984. The first room that you'd go into is called the Marble Hall, which is designed to be really ostentatious, show how wealthy they were, but also all of the people they knew that were important. Belton is a treasure house because of its extraordinary collections. Next, we're going to go and explore some of those. We're standing in the strong room where the family's silver collection is stored. This isn't normally accessed on the normal visitor route. We have some really significant pieces from really important silver makers. We also have in the collection a painting by Philippe Mercier called a conversation piece, which is hanging in one of the display rooms upstairs. It was a painting that revolutionized the way those paintings were done in English portraiture. Last year at auction, we bought this, which is one of his preparatory drawings for a conversation piece. The reason it's important is it shows us some of his thinking as he was planning the painting. It's a chalk drawing on paper but also it shows Eleanor Turconnell, who was the wife of the then Lord Brownlow. She was the daughter of the builder of the house and had married her cousin so that the house stayed in the family. We know from the painting that she was almost certainly in a wheelchair and this drawing gives us a lot more detail of her but also the wheelchair that she was in. And we've currently been doing quite a lot of research to enable us to understand why she might have been in a wheelchair. This is likely to have a very light little clean of the surface then we'll have a mount made and it framed up so it can go on display so visitors will be able to see this alongside the painting that's upstairs. We just had this returned from conservation work. It's a gorgeous piece that is an enamel which is done on copper with a metal frame. This is one of the family members called Nina Cust, who was a draftswoman, a writer and a sculptor and we have quite a lot of her works in the house. This was done by a arts and crafts artist called Alexander Fisher who's very well known for his enamelled works. This had some corrosion on it which had historically been on there. We don't tend to restore items, we conserve them and it was important to take the corrosion off because if we'd left it, it could have become worse. So it's been away to a specialist metal conservator who's very gently cleaned it off, made it look gorgeous. We're just getting it ready to put it back on display so you'll soon be able to see it in the house when you come. Next we're going to go to a room called the Anti-Study where we're going to look at one of the pieces of furniture in the collection. This is one of the treasures of our collection, which is a lapis lazuli cabinet. It was made in Rome in 1640, and the family purchased it on their grand tour. Lapis is the Roman word for stone, and lazuli is a Persian word meaning sky or heaven. It's because of the color of it, it looks like the sky or heaven. And lazuli has that name because actually the stone comes from Persia, which is now Afghanistan. Because of its age, we know exactly what mine in Afghanistan it would have come out of. It's made almost entirely of lazuli, which is unusual because it was hugely expensive. So we think it may be the only one like it in the world. And it sits on a Rococo base that we used to think was separate, but actually we think they were made together. It's actually a secret cabinet that has lots of little drawers in it. This is a hugely popular item in our collection that attracts lots of attention. So we're really pleased to have it here and pleased to have it out in a space where people can have a good view of it when they come to visit us. Hello, I'm Fionn. I'm Collections and House Officer here at Belton House. And we are currently stood in the old kitchens, which are part of an outhouse away from the main mansion. This room was used for filming in a series called Queen Charlotte, A Bridgerton Story, which is a spin-off from the Bridgerton series that you might know from Netflix. So like many spaces, this room was completely transformed for the filming. They took out all of the collection items which we supervised. We had a cast and crew of about 250 people and because it's filmed and shown on Netflix it means that more people can see it in a, in a different light. 
So people like me who work in the conservation team would be supervising all the work that's taking place to make sure that they weren't doing any damage to the house and the collection. So we're currently in the conservatory, which is built on the foundations of the old manor house that was built before the mansion we know today. This is the first ever cast iron and glass domestic conservatory to ever be built. And it was also used to showcase plants collected by the Brownlow family that they'd collected during their travels. And more recently, it was used as a filming location for the Netflix series, Queen Charlotte, A Bridgerton Story. And Queen Charlotte was seen in here to be picking oranges of orange trees that were brought in as props. Hello, I'm Lydia. I'm one of the collections assistants here at Belton. We're currently in Attic 16, which is one of our archive space in the attics. And we're about to go through one of Marion Alford's workbooks. Lady Marion lived here and did a lot of work here at Belton. Um, this is just one of her workbooks that we have in the collection. Quite amazing pieces. So some have her sewing pins in still because she would do these designs and then embroider with them. She also designed for multiple houses. So she designed for Belton House, which is her husband's family home for Ashridge House, which is her family home, and also for Oldford House, which is a house that she designed and had built for herself in London. So this one here is a lovely one. It's actually got Marion's handwriting on, which she's known for having quite awful handwriting, which is quite funny because she's such a brilliant designer and an artist, but she can't write very, very neatly. She would also use paint in her designs. This is paint used on tissue paper, so extremely delicate, as you can see. And then this one here is a lovely one as well. So Lady Marion helped to open up the Royal School of Needlework with Princess Alexandra, one of Queen Victoria's daughters. And this piece actually corresponds with an item in our textile collection. We've got the heart for Ireland here, the English rose and the thistle for Scotland. And this was designed as part of a Jubilee celebration. So really, really lovely piece as well. We hope you've enjoyed your visit to Belton House. Thanks for your support in ensuring places like Belton are preserved for everyone forever.